Hey YouTube, welcome to a new Unity 3D land tutorial. So, what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're actually going to try and improve our land AI for our characters a little bit. So just like we did on the space tutorial, if you watch that, if not, don't worry about it. We are going to try and make it so that they um, interact with us more, so they talk to us, they stuff like that kind of things. And I've got some audio samples we can test with, it should, it should be okay hopefully. And it's really, really easy to do because we've already used all the code before, but we're going to rewrite it out to save for people who haven't done it. So the first thing you want to do is open your land AI script. So I'm going to go to my scripts, entity and land AI. And we've we've got all this here, that's all fine. And we don't need Darth Vader speech. So another one we want to open is actually the character's ID and stuff. So um, that's in our misc scripts, so misc scripts here. And we will find entity stats here. So we have shopkeeper and farmer, we have two so far. So we might add a third one for it, because we will be adding things into this for now. Well, soon. So the first thing what I want to look at is actually giving them a kind of respect level for the character. So we can, using this we can create enemies and good guys, so we can define good or evil. But it's not just good or evil because it could be liking as well, kind of thing. So I want some characters to actually like you, I want others to absolutely hate you. Kind of thing like that. And then we can adjust it to see if it works, kind of good. So just about below these variables here, I'm going to create a new note, and I'm going to call it stats. And just in here, I'm going to type var respect for player, and it will be an integer. That's all it's going to be. So if it's zero, they absolutely hate you. If it's 100, they are best, best friend, best buddy in the world kind of thing. If it's 50, they'll help you, but they'll want payment of kind of thing. 70, they might do it for free. 25, they're going to shoot you kind of thing. Like that. Really simple. So I'm just going to tidy this up here, and I'll add it to it, just like we've done before. If you haven't seen a... Um, what you call it, a class video, you may want to go and check that out before we do, otherwise you'll get completely lost while doing this. So we add respect for player, I call it RFP, so do it to the bottom, respect for player equals RFP, and then up here we use it at the end, so RFP int. So now that we have respect for our player, that's good enough. So we can, I'll explain it before, we can use it. But we've got to actually add it to our things up here. So um, there are many ways you can actually add it. I'm just going to keep adding it at the top with variables because it's easier. And the one thing I found when designing the Lost Maps game I was doing is you actually want one variable on its own for your player. So I'm just going to call it player. But on the rest, we're going to put them into uh, arrays because then they work much, much easier than having... Um, than going over entity dot zero dot one dot player you can just put zero as an entity and have a separate variable for your player so it's always easier um, if you don't believe it it's up to you it don't really save any time but hey so respect for player we can't really use for the player so we can either just put it as a hundred or we can add a new function to do it it seems kind of pointless to add a new function for one thing so I'm just going to put a hundred for now, so the player has a hundred. That simple. So we're going to begin working on the end, um, array for our entities. We've done this before, so if you've seen it before, you just do that. If not, I'll explain it as we go. So the first thing we want to do is create a new variable, just like here, but just to store every entity. So I'm going to call it var um, entities, and then it'll be an entity. And then you call it an array, and then we've got equals new entity. Uh, capital E and then in square brackets one thing I like to do is just press enter now we can begin putting these new entities in so new entity female blah 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 put a comma again new entity blah 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 end it with a square bracket and semicolon so what that'll do is come down here you can just put in tab if you like make it easier it'll come in so Add a new entity, number 0 equals new entity, female text shop, blah, 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 number 1 equals suit, blah, blah, blah. So it's a lot easier and they laid out. And all you do is if you want to add another one, is add another comma here and then put it next to it. That simple. So last thing for us to do is actually to add the respect for these characters. So female text shop, she's like... Um, she's a shopkeeper, she doesn't really mind. What's her 50? And then maybe when you buy more things from her, she'll 
like you more, but then you, if you attack her, she likes you less, kind of thing. Farmer David, he's, I don't know, we can say he's polite to everybody, so he's 60. He won't help you, but he won't exactly kill you either. One thing I have noticed I've done wrong is simply just remove new entity from here, just like that. So it says var entities, brec, colon, um, your class name, array, equals, and then you put it. Otherwise, it won't try to do it. It's weird. If you want to put new array entity, you put a number inside here, then finish it off, and that'll be the length of your array. Whereas we just want um, to actually set the data, so it's like that. Then if we go back to Unity, you should see. So Unity likes that. Perfect. So we could sit here forever and add more variables to make a really good entity, but the way I prefer to make entities is you just slowly put on what you need at the time. So right now we should go across and edit the respect for the player in the entity, and then maybe later when we want to add a sound we'll come back and add it. You'll notice we did this differently in space, but that was when I was first beginning to explain it. If you're new here and first beginning to explain it, just follow this method, it's so much easier. Because then you're not worrying about what you have and haven't done, so it's better. So, we're going to jump across to our land AI, and in here we've got the basic, basic waypoint script, so they're just following a waypoint, that simple. So, we first need to check if they're in close to our character, and then we can bounce it off the respect. So, we'll just up here, we'll type var character range, and then we're going to copy the entirety of this up here, paste it in there. So, character range, blah, 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 but instead of waypoints, current waypoint, we're going to type game object dot find character or whatever you've called your main character dot transform dot position minus position perfect so character range will detect it but then what happens if our character is in range then what we can quickly do just above all this is say if character range dot magnitude here yeah, is more than and then now we want the enemy's vision so like how far they can see now you see in some games like border and then the word L-A-N-D-S, I'm not going to say it for copyright issues, there's quite a few animals which are like, they can't see you until you get up close, but then again there's some high in the sky what will see you from miles away and come and get you. So we want a field of view for the enemy, or a vision size. So we're going to add that into it. So stats here, all that type var, um, maximum vision, I don't know, better idea field of view, that work, and we'll say, we'll just say an insert to keep it easy. So we'll add this to here, so, well, comma, well we got field of view, FOV, be an integer, add it down here, oops, so field of view equals FOV, perfect, add it up here. So let's think, 10 is a good length, 5, they go really close to it. So maybe we should just stick with just a normal number for now and see if it works. So we'll just say 20 for both. So we can say the normal human eyesight for our characters might be 20, we have to test it. So we've got 20, perfect. We do need to add one to our character though. So our characters will just say minus one, yeah. So we'll also say minus one. So we can always check if it's if any number equals minus one, then skip it. But we shouldn't be using it anyway. So if the character's range that magnitude is more than, and this is where we need to create the link to our entity stars. So down here, we'll just type scripts. Oh, and one thing I have found out is when your script starts to be going long, don't think it doesn't work. That's something I've been doing. If a script gets long, I'll leave it thinking it's not going to work. Don't. Carry on with it. The longer it gets, the better it gets. Yes, you might get more errors, but it's worth it if your script works. Because if you have an inventory fully working, but then you add something to it and it works, but it looks long, then why not just keep it? That's something that's always been pushing me away. But yeah, so just keep going on me. So scripts, var, stats, and this will be entity stats. And then we'll have to assign that using the, the inspector of relation map. So we could type, if character range.magnitude is more than stats dot entities, and then put a bracket, then we can use our ID, which we added a while ago. So that'll take it to whichever character. So we've got here, female text shop, and then we can type field of view here, dot field of view. So if it's more than, say, 20, so if our character's 20 away, then it'll begin moving. So 
so then it checks if our character is awake because we don't want them walking straight past us and ignoring us. We want them to maybe stop, look at us sometimes. We'll have to change the code around sometimes for that. But that's what should work for now. So you can see we have female tech shop done and so is the farmer David, works perfect. Now if we actually find the female tech shop one, where are you? You're here. You don't have, actually you do have it attached. No, you, ah, oh, you don't have it attached. So we'll just say the Civ01 female is ours for the moment. So their ID is zero, that will take them to female tech shop. Stats we need to assign, and that's something quite bad now because then every time we attach it to a civilian, we've got to automatically sign it and that's not what we need so the, but when you've got a case like that then you want to add a function start to make it do it otherwise don't bother because if you've just attached it to your character there's no real point making it like the game even more so here we'll just type we can even make this private now so stats equals game object dot find misc scripts dot get component and then we can name it our entity stats. So just here, boom. So that should work that simple. If you wanted to save even less room, you could just do it like that. Put them all on one line. I think I'm gonna keep it like that, just if you've got one. But when you start getting bigger, you want multiple brackets. So when that loads it, it should automatically sign that at the start, it should hide it. And when we walk up to them, they should stop still. Just completely stop still. But if not, they might go forward. I've got a half suspicion on that. So you can see her moving. We have a weapon stats error, but that doesn't matter. So if we run up to her, and she should stop moving. So she did stop moving, but, but she's like got no force or anything. So yeah, so the reason it's still pushing forward and moving around when we actually tell it not to is because down here it's saying the character's out of range, move forward. So it comes down and it gives it force. Now imagine my ball example again. If you roll a ball down a hill, whether you say the hill's there or not, that ball's not going to stop until you, until you tell it to. So basically, if character range is less than that, else, and then here we put rigidbody.velocity equals vector 3.0. And basically what that'll do is set the force of it, any forces on it to vector 3, 0, which is, you can also just put vector 3, 0, 0, 0 if you like. I just prefer 0, it just looks nicer. And then that should hopefully stop them in the spot, so we can go and try it. So as you can see they're running away, and we go and stop them, hey you stop still. So it works, obviously it looks terrible because who stops when you go up that close. So. There's something there we can improve, but we've got it, it's basically going off now. So now they can actually, we've got some kind of detection with them. They can see us, kind of thing. So obviously here we want it to be, say, divided by two. So when we get up really close to them, they're gonna stop. Otherwise, they'll, they still see us, so it's okay. So we can try it one last time. So this is the last thing we'll be doing, then I'll end the tutorial here so it's not too long. You can see the one in the blue vest here walking, we stop, she would have stopped by now, but since we divided it, we have to go really close. So if you imagine any game you could walk around, Grand Theft Auto is not the best example for that, but some games where you can actually talk to individual characters, you walk up close to them, they'll stop for a second and look at you, then they'll just walk off, so that's what we'll eventually do. But for now, um, we've worked, made it walk up to them, so when they're attacking you, Instead of putting divided by two, we just put full vision. So if they see you, they're coming to get you. Otherwise, you can hide out of there. Then we can add the stealth elements to the game. So it'd be really, really cool. So that's all we're going to do for this tutorial. We haven't done much, but we've started off with something of something big. So we're going to carry on working with this as much as possible. I'll try not to make it end AI tutorial, AI tutorial, AI tutorial over and over again because then people who don't want to do it will get bored. So I'll do a couple of AI tutorials, stick something random in there for someone else to play with, then add some more. So it'll be really cool. So thank you for watching. I really hope you liked it. Please join my Facebook group and I'll see you next time.